Central is Dublin Airport. The country is Ireland, and the time is high summer. We're waiting to welcome two people, one of whom is coming back to Ireland, back with his young bride for a visit to the part of Ireland that he knows best and loves best, the Seagirt Kingdom of Kerry. Doubtless Vincent has been boasting a little about Kerry already, telling Blanche of its loveliness and painting pictures that will soon be realities for them both. Pictures like this one, for instance, a blue sky mirrored in the placid waters of Park Nasilla. A preview of Kerry could start anywhere, for this is a county to which the hills and the sea have been kind, and there is beauty and plenty everywhere. It is a county with a thousand moods. No matter where you turn, you will find much to delight the eye, and the character of the country changes with every mile. Killarney, a name that is synonymous with beauty the world over. And Killarney is only one item in Kerry's hierarchy of loveliness. One beauty spot in a land of far vistas and vivid colouring. The crimson fuchsia with its drops of blood brings a touch of colour to the mountain lands. And the yellow gorse is everywhere, running like a golden flame across the countryside. Blanche and Vincent are on the road now. On one of the little uncrowded roads of Ireland where as often as not you have the landscape to yourself. A pleasant country to travel in, a country with so many varieties of scenery that it has been described as a continent in little. Wild irises at the water's edge, catching the light and intensifying it. We wonder whether this is Vincent's own idea or whether he's simply a young husband doing what he's told. Be that as it may, the result is a bouquet for the bride. Cottages like this one are not as common as they used to be, but they're still a feature of the mountain lands. But the soul of a country is in its people and their way of life. And in Ireland, Blanche found a friendly, welcoming people and a quiet, unhurried way of life. In the bogland districts, turf is still footed and dried in the traditional way so that the mountain winds will put a skin on it against the winter. And donkeys still play a part in the rural economy. But the old is mixed with the new, and the service station has found its way to the mountain country. You can get petrol anywhere in Ireland, from Mizzenhead to Cape Clear, and even the best of cars need fueling occasionally. Up she rises, easily, spectacularly, and in one piece. I think he likes raising the bonnet. But we'll be off again soon, and the next stop is Killarney. Well, the next stop to speak of, for there will be much to see on the way. A load of peat on its way home from the bog. Men building a wall with material that costs nothing at all. And a man in a fuchsia shirt. He's only one of a group, and he may not be the best worker, but he certainly steals the picture. He is as colorful as a scorched sky at sunset. A slight delay here, the sort of delay that you may expect occasionally in a land of good beef and good butter. And now Killarney, within a stone's throw of the lakes that have made it famous. Killarney is ringed with beauty spots. Ahado, Ross Castle and Inish Fallon, of which Macaulay said that it is not heaven's reflex, but a bit of heaven itself. And you can have your choice of transport. The jaunting car offers a leisurely way of seeing the lakes and the driver can be depended on for the tail that shortens the road. You can go by sunshine bus and in armchair comfort. Or you can go by car like Blanche and Vincent, stopping when and where the spirit moves you and working to a flexible schedule. For the present, however, Blanche and Vincent 
are taking their ease in Killarney town. Tomorrow their car will be on the road again and in the meantime they've much to talk about. And Blanche, paying her first visit to Kerry, has no need of a professional courier. For she has an amateur one all to herself. Their talk is not all of the Kingdom of Kerry, but we may be sure that Vincent is still painting pictures of Killarney, and on the morrow she'll have a chance to judge for herself. Vincent says nothing here, for this is Ladies' View, a popular vantage point on the road to Kenmare. The tourist usually brings something back, a stick of rock, a bottle of cognac, it depends where you go, and here you can have a rug made from the wool of mountain sheep. But for the moment our travellers are more interested in scenes than in souvenirs, and think more of river and lake than of branded ashtrays. But they'll bring back something more tangible than memories, a permanent record of shared experiences. They're leaving the Kalani Lake country now, though they'll return to it later on for a tour of the peninsula that stretches out between Dingle Bay and the Kenmare River. A Javi with some eastern clients. They may have rickshaws in Siam, but they don't have jaunting cars. Meanwhile, Blanche and Vincent are on their way to Parknasilla, making the circular trip known as the Ring of Kerry. And soon Blanche sees a typical Irish country town, cheery, homely, and more prosperous than you might think. A town where you can buy anything from cosmetics to cattle medicine, and from turkeys to television sets. But they've not come to Kerry to see towns. The next stop is Parknasilla situated on the wide estuary known as the Kenmare River, Park Nasilla is one of the loveliest places in the southwest. It's a fine center for walking or boating, and there's no law against sitting in the sun. You may bring golf clubs, of course, though in such lovely surroundings you will find it hard to keep your head down and your eye on the ball. But when you miss, you'll always have something to blame, which is comforting. And a well-hit ball runs sweet and true, even at Park Masilla. But to come to Park Masilla and spend all your time ashore, even if your putts are going down, will be to miss one of the highlights of a Kerry holiday. The sea looks well from Park Masilla, but to complete the picture, you must see Park Masilla from the sea. Blanche has been looking forward to a boat trip on the Kenmare River, and Vincent is anxious to prove that he did not exaggerate its delights. A clear sky, a bright sun, and a blue sea. If Park Nasilla and the waters about it do not live up to Vincent's advanced publicity, he must have kissed the Blarney Stone more than once. But we have no fears that he has overpainted. If he has erred at all, it's in the other direction. It's never easy to match reality in words, and almost impossible when the reality is the Kenmare River. This is something that you must see and feel and experience. And Ever afterwards, the best of words will be no more than an elbow to nudge the memory. Later, there'll be time for remembering. For the present, the mind stores its impressions of a time that will never be again, but which, in retrospect, will retain something of its magic.
And now, in the cool of the evening, the magic of the day is still about them. It lingers like the failing light, and it will return just as surely. They are still within the sound of the sea, and all about them is the charm that is Kerry. Tomorrow they'll be on the road again to learn more of its loveliness, its quiet waters, its towering hills, its golden sand. The end of a perfect day and the promise of others to follow. Follow the bonnet, stopping where you please and bound by no timetable. A fine day for a bathe, and in Kerry you haven't to go far to find a bathing place. The trouble is rather that each seems better than the last, and the best of all may be round the next corner. You can have solitude or company as the humour takes you. You can share the beach, or you can have it all to yourself. Well, not quite to yourself. But it's a lonely life sometimes for donkeys. Beaches like this are common in Kerry. Unspoilt and lovely and off the beaten track. Little strips of sand and shore that only the seagulls know of. No coloured umbrellas, no rows of bathing tents. No serried ranks of prone bodies toasting in the sun. Just the things that matter, the basic things, the sea and the sand and the sunlight. We won't give you the name of this beach, though we will tell you that it's near Kenmare, but if you come to Kerry, you'll have no trouble in finding one just as good. And like Blanche and Vincent, you'll probably have a monopoly of it. You'll have it all to yourself. It seems we spoke too soon, for here he is again, keeping a watchful eye on the intruders and thinking his own thoughts. Kenmare, famous for its mild climate and subtropical vegetation. But this is departure, not arrival. Blanche and Vincent are leaving a place that has been described by a writer as an amalgam of the prettiest surprises that ever met the eye. They're sorry to leave Kenmare, but Regrets are softened by what lies ahead, for on their way back to the Kalani country. One of the many musts in Kalani is a visit to the famous Gap of Dunlo, near the entrance to which is that well-known landmark, Kate Carney's Cottage. This is the threshold of the mountain country. A road like this is a test of car and driver, and Blanche has no doubts on either score. A land of blue lakes, purple hills, and the yellow gorse that blossoms, as the saying goes, whilst kissing is in season, and so has a double right to the label of perennial. The traditional way of doing the gap is by pony, and these slow, sure-footed animals are a familiar feature in Dunlow. But this is a horse of a different color, and a touch of view, hello. The 
The Gap is wild and breathtaking country, running for four miles through the defile that separates the McGillicuddy Reeks from the chain known as the Purple Mountains. Blanche and Vince are traveling to the summit of the car, and those carry them so far and serve them so well that an idea is forming in Blanche's mind. She is going to ride a pony through the Gap or bust. The man with the ponies has a customer. Gentle, sure he's as gentle as a sheep, ma'am, as wise as a Christian, and as sure-footed as a mountain goat. A child could ride him, and he is safe as in his pram. Blanche, God spare her health, has never been out with the Galway Blazers. Not that it matters very much, for the pony has carried many a novice in his time, and its master knows the gap like the back of his hand. Undue hurry in the gap of Dunlow would be not only dangerous, but insulting. It would be almost sacrilegious. But the man with the ponies is in no hurry. He has all the time in the world. But time moves on, even in Kerry and the best of holidays comes to an end. The time for storing up impressions is running out, but Blanche and Vincent will have much to remember. Quiet beaches and winding roads, and the backdrop of the high hills. Happy, carefree days that were lived fully from morning to night. All these will live on in the mind's eye and yield dividends in the future. For the past does not flow off like water under a bridge. It can be recaptured at will. It can be reread like a poem. It can be rerun like a film. This is the economy of the mind, that it can have its cake and eat it. Vincent and Blanche will remember Kerry and the happiness it brought them. They remember too a kindly people with the gift of friendliness. Hill and lake, sea and shore, gorse and fuchsia. The loveliness of Kerry and the magic of it, caught and held in shared experiences that will soon be shared memories. The place is Dublin, and the time is still high summer. The end of the chapter is the beginning of a new one. For the real test of a holiday is the memories it engenders. And this one has left enduring memories of golden days in the wonderful kingdom of Kerry. <laughs>